Welcome to the conversation. Today we have a special guest, and before we introduce him, we'll bring in our host. Hello, Denise and Sai. Welcome. Thank you, Barry. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you all today. Thank you so much, Barry and Denise, and thank you for all the participants for being here. Likewise, and especially in here. Uh, before we dive in, just to emphasize a few points, if you will, Yanir's work expands many, many domains, very broad, very deep, and it's had a tremendous impact in the work that we, we do in practice with organizations on a daily basis, uh, all around from complexity thinking and complexity science and systems and, and all the details we're going to get into. Yanir, thank you for making the time, and I think as the listeners are here, this is a tremendous opportunity to think about how even broader of an impact Yanir's wisdom can have. So thank you all, and I hand it back to Barry and Denise and Yanir, welcome all around. So Yanir, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so I am a physicist, but I've been working on social and biological systems, the understanding of social and biological systems for about 30 years and um, um, trying to understand how uh, dependencies in systems give rise to the behaviors that we see around us um, because the traditional ways that we used to think about uh, dependent about systems don't enable us to really understand how dependencies work so that's a few moments of, of introduction nice and you're calling it today from the Boston area yes and thank you for uh, having me on here great Denise, you want to start off the conversation with Yanir and see where we go to? Sure, Yanir. So um, again, welcome and thank you so much for, um, for your time. Um, can you tell us what uh, complexity means to you? What, what does that mean? Okay. So um, I think that there is a, a technical way to think about complexity, which is helpful. And that is, it's kind of the number of possible things that can happen. Um, and when we think about complexity today, we think about how complex the world is, how difficult it is to figure out what's going on and all those kinds of things. But um, that's the same really as the technical problem because when there are a lot of things that can go on, it's kind of hard to figure out what's happening and to relate things to each other. And so um, there is a, a a connection, imagine that you um, uh, walk into a room and you might be surprised by all kinds of different things happening um, and then you have to respond to them. Um, that's a circumstance of high complexity. You can think about it like a, a really complicated video game if you want to have something that is a little bit easy to, to, to visualize. Uh, but the real world today for individuals, for people in their personal as well as professional lives, and companies in dealing with uh, changes in the global economy or changes in the technology or in whatever else is going on in their environment, um, uh, as well as governments and, and large institutions are are all facing the problem of incredibly high complexity in the world. Okay. So, so how, how do you kind of distill that complexity and make it uh, manageable or scale? How, how does complexity and the, the scale um, kind of relate to one another? Okay. So the, the first thing is that, that scale matters, right? This is something that we have to understand um, uh, directly. Uh, the, the usual way of thinking about how scale matters is that as you look at larger and larger scale, the details disappear. Right, so what individual people are doing, or even companies, or even the society, or all of biology, doesn't really matter if we look at the Earth orbiting the sun. The Earth is orbiting the sun. 
It's doing the same thing it was doing by and large since before life existed. So at the largest scales, the tiny stuff and even somewhat bigger stuff doesn't matter. And when we think about society, um, that's kind of one of the pictures that we have, that all of the specific details don't matter and we can average stuff. So we can have policies about people or about economics that don't have to do with what one person is doing. They have to do with sort of an average of everything. Um, in, in the case of complex systems, what happens is that some things don't simplify at the large scale. So, for example, what people are deciding to buy from year to year changes. There are fashions that come and go. There are uh, changes in technology that affect how people are choosing, you know, where they travel to or um, how they communicate with each other. And these large changes that are important for all of society are also important for individuals because of the way people are talking to each other changes and each of us is changing how we're talking to each other. So um, that's sort of the basic idea of scale that there are some things that simplify, but there are today many things that don't simplify. And that's really what makes the world such a complex place to deal with. Um, there's a, a flip side of the scale picture, which is um, how we work together is what creates these different uh, behaviors. So if we are deciding, all of us, to change how we're talking to each other, you know, 20 years ago, there were no smartphones. Today, the world, everybody has a smartphone. That's a very big change over 20 years. Um, we can, as a result, talk to people all over the world. The point is that the large scale things that happen in society are happening because many, many people together are changing what they're doing. So the things that we see at a large scale are maybe uh, simply and obviously, but this is important, reflecting the things that many of us are doing. Okay? I don't know if that's answering all of your question, but maybe it's a start. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, that, that, that helps. Um, Barry, did you have, did you want to jump in at, at any point? And ask yeah, anything that's or? fascinating. Thank you, uh, Denise. That's fascinating, Amir. Can you speak a little bit about emergence and self-organization? Sure. So what we've been talking about is emergence in the sense that emergence are those behaviors of a collective that you can see at a larger scale. So um, uh, when um, many people uh, decide to sell on the stock market, what emerges, if you will, is a drop in the market. So those are the emergent collective behaviors that we see. Um, there are other ways of thinking about emergence, but all of them relate to what happens when many of us or many elements of a system are doing things together. And self-organization is when those behaviors arise because of the interactions within the system. It is, of course, possible, and this is something that we have uh, is, you know, from before complex system science, when there are external forces on a system, you can get collective behavior. So um, if, um, you know, the sun rises in the morning and everybody wakes up because the sun rises in the morning, then that's an externally driven uh, collective behavior. But what we find, of course, today in society is that everybody actually wakes up to go to work not because of the sunrise. And so that's an internal dynamic, which is emergent because of the interactions among people. Interesting. Very, very good. Denise, please continue. So, so yeah, I, I, I just have a, a, a kind of something that I wanted to go back to. So I just, I just thought it was interesting. 
you were talking about um, the possibility of um, the thing, everything that can happen. And when I think of that, I just think of how enormous that is, right? So if you walk, you were saying, if you walk into a room and how you respond in that room, well, it depends upon the size of the room and how many people are in the room and your little area of the room will depend upon how you respond. So can you, can, I guess I'm trying to understand, how do you take all of this information and that complexity and that scale and kind of distill it down into, you know, um, an application where people can can use it or or how they're using it so people understand how how am i using that that complexity and scale in my kind of everyday world okay so there are actually only two different things that you can do turns out okay one is that you can simplify actually by going to large scale so by saying the only thing that I'm going to care about is the really biggest things. Now that may not satisfy you because there are lots of things that you need to yeah. deal with in your life or in the company's life. And this goes back to, you know, maybe we'll get to agility, which is the subject I think of the podcast, which we can talk about. But the point is if there are lots of things that you have to deal with, it turns out that the only way for an individual to deal with it is actually not to, but to share that responsibility with others. So you actually have to think about yourself as part of a group or team that is collectively engaged in the problem of understanding all of these different things that might happen. So each of you can deal with aspects of what's going on rather than the totality of what's going on. Um, and the, um, so, so that's a really key change in thinking. Um, and I, I, maybe you want to ask questions, but we can, the point is that given those two things, they're really, these two possibilities. One is distilling things by eliminating some of the possibilities or most of the possibilities down to only a few that are kind of the, let's call them the most important. And the other one is saying, well, you know, I can't do it. I'm going to have to share the responsibility with others. Yeah, okay. so that, that, yeah I want to hop in um, for a second. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so that's, that sounds like it's kind of like being agile or, or flexible in, mm -hmm. in, uh, from the big picture to the details. So where, where, how does that, how does that kind of, uh, practicality come into play? Yeah. So the, the challenge that we're facing, uh, today is that we have a, um, we have this very high complexity that we're dealing with and any single individual really can't deal with all of that complexity. Now, when you talk about agile, we're switching to organizations. So we're switching to groups of people that are working together and trying to deal with things. Or um, if you want, you can also think about an individual dealing with things and how can they do things in an agile way. But if we think about organizations, we have to think about the structure of the communications and the control processes of the organization. And one of the challenges that we face is that the solution that we used to use for organizational structures and control doesn't work anymore. And that's the hierarchy, right? A hierarchy basically puts a lot of the control in the hands of a single individual. And what I just said was that one individual can't know and can't understand and can't respond to all of the complexity that we have today. And so in a, they also cannot plan for all of those things that will happen. So traditional control and decision-making as well as traditional planning, which is centralized, 
um, doesn't address the large number of possibilities that we're facing in the environment. And that's true whether you're talking about business decisions generally, or it's true if you're talking about what is traditionally talked about in Agile, which is engineering, which involves planning, anticipation of what might happen, and building a system that can respond to the different kinds of things that will happen. So when we're faced with that, what's the answer? And the answer I've told you is, in the cases where you can simplify things so that you can make strategic decisions, well, that's a very powerful tool to have, and that's one of the tools that complex systems provides. In the case where the complexity is too high, we have to have people work together in teams where they share the responsibility and they don't use the paradigm of appealing to authority mm -hmm. or putting someone in charge so as to um, use that process to simplify the decision. So more, more, more human, human side, more yeah. team versus authority, command and control decision planning. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and that leads to all kinds of other questions, which are an essential part of management today and complex system science in this space is how do we organize people? How do we create communication among people? Mm -hmm. How do we share the responsibility? What are the relationships that are needed in order to create the ability to respond to external uh, challenges? Great questions and inquiries. Yeah. So, so Yunir, can you, on that, can you speak a little bit more about the um, kind of the, that 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 individual um, versus a, a, a collective and and team or um, human? I think in one of the articles that I had read, you were talked about. Uh, civil, uh, civil, uh, human civilization um, is capable of behavior that uh, are of uh, greater complexity than those of individual. So can you just dive into that? I, I just thought that that was very interesting. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so it's you know, the complexity that we're experiencing in the world, in some sense, is just the complexity of civilization, right? We are, we are connected globally, and things that are happening around us have to do with what other people are doing in other parts of the world. So it's almost a simple statement, if you will, to say that the complexity of what people are doing is high. Um, maybe it's helpful, though, if I step back and say that um, it doesn't necessarily follow that if individuals are complex, that what they do together is complex. And maybe a good example of this is a flock of sheep, right? Because if you look at an individual sheep, there's all kinds of stuff that it does if you watch. But a flock of sheep kind of moves this way and moves that way. And and the amount of information or, or the number of possibilities that you need to describe what's going on is not very high. Um, but with people, it's not that way. What's happening at the, in the world is very highly complex, and that comes from how we're interacting with each other. So we are both creating and experiencing this complexity. And because of that, we have to respond to it by increasing the way we're in, by changing the way we're interacting with each other. So we are capable of doing many very complex systems and we're experiencing the fact that we're doing many complex systems because that complex things, because that's what other people are doing. Yes. Um, I, I mean, the, there is a crux here, which is that the human civilization is made up of many, many levels of people working together. People working together as individuals, in groups, in organizations, um, and in global 
systems of interaction. Nations are a piece of that, but really we're in these global networks of people engaged in commercial, social, and you know, all kinds of processes that are affecting what the world is doing. Well, and I would imagine, you know, with the, you're talking about the 20 year technology curve, for instance, <clears throat> not, only, not only do with everybody connected <laughs> everywhere all the time, but the number of social platforms, you know, social media and forums, mm -hmm. say maybe not social platform, but forums on different types of subjects, uh, I would imagine could allow for that self-organization to happen more so today than ever before. Yeah. And again, the self-organization is, is subtle and interesting. A, a fair amount of it is still geographical, meaning people locally interact with each other. And one of the things that is not happening, which one might think would happen, is that as we interact with each other, we become more the same, right? Because when people talk to each other, they share ideas and they begin to converge on a single idea. Sometimes that happens. But that's actually not what's happening in the world. What's happening is that different groups of people are going in different directions. So there's a lot of fragmentation and polarization, which we see politically. But there's also, as you said, a lot of different groups thinking about and engaging in different kinds of topics that are of interest to them. And that creates this kind of elaborate multi-scale structure that is the characteristic of really complex behaviors. Wow. Where does this fit into, say, the Day Stone framework of the Kenevan? So, you know, every framework is trying to make, um, create an understanding of certain distinctions and certain similarities. Um, the framework that I'm talking about is characterizing a system in terms of complexity, which we talked about, which is the number of possibilities, and the scale at which you are observing the system. And it allows also for describing dynamical behaviors, but they're not the central focus of that picture. Um, Gary, did you have anything else? I know we're getting close to our the end of our time. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, fascinating conversation. Yes. Um, so, you near, uh, is there anything we are getting close to the end of our time? So, thank you again so much. I think this has been a great conversation, and I think our viewers and our uh, audience has, has uh, gotten a lot out of this conversation and value. Um, is there anything that um, we didn't touch upon that you wanted to add? Um, anything that you, a topic or just something sure. in general? I can talk about that. So, the point is that. You know, what we've talked about is the challenge of transformation, not of technology per se, but really of the society itself. And some of that is very manifest in organizations. So there are organizations that still have significant hierarchical control processes, but many, many organizations have much more distributed decision-making processes where people interact laterally in order to come to decisions. Um, uh, we also see this in society where there's increasing presence of sort of leaderless movements, social movements that, you know, fads and panics are leaderless, but now there are more social movements like for example, maybe what's going on in Hong Kong and people are pointing to other places. Um, but the, the thing that we haven't really touched upon is how this affects the public sector. The public sector is healthcare and education and governance itself, where we have a very significant challenge of the systems that are in existence today. And those systems are dysfunctional not because of the individuals that we may put in charge, though they may be causing problems, no doubt. Um, and surely their decisions may be causing problems. 
But the structural problem that is being faced is that these systems are simply incapable of dealing with the complexity of the world around us. And the reaction that many people have to that failure is to focus on the choice of the individual. Who are we going to put in charge in order to fix the problem? And the more systematic approach is to realize that we have to distribute the decision-making. And one of the ways to distribute the decision-making is to create systems that are inherently distributed. And the other way is to choose individuals that emphasize themselves the fact that decision-making is distributed and to use the capacity and capability of the larger society to make the decisions that are most important for us to make. So that sounds like a, like move, potentially moving away from the top-down authority command control all the time model to more of a distributed and using what's in the space with the with the people the human the troops the, the 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 i don't hate to say peons but the but 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 the field right and the, the people in the field versus the top down yes and it's not that it has to be homogeneous right a voting system is a very poor method of aggregating human understanding um and if it was a good way to do things, then we would constantly be taking votes about everything that we do. Um, and the answer is different people have different understanding in different areas. And in some sense, this goes to what sounds very strange, right? But seems in other ways ideal, which is that the individuals or the groups that understand the best and would make the best decisions are the ones that should make them. That sounds counter to democracy and counter to uh, dictatorships or communism or any other ideology that is current, you know, traditional ideologies. And then it raises the question, well, who's going to decide who's going to decide? And the answer is that's an emergent process that is something that has to create itself in the process of developing the system that we have and our ability to make that happen ultimately will lead to or not our ability to make those decisions well there is no other choice that is the system that has to be created in order to deal with complexity interesting um, well, again, thank you so much. I think we're, we're we are pretty much out of out of time. Um, but I, just um, one thing: if you can um, uh, give our audience kind of uh, something, um, an actionable uh, take, something that they can take away and 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 kind of put into place and in their life, um, what can you share? Something an actionable takeaway for our audience. Again, there are two things. One is to learn about the methods and the approaches to simplifying so that you can focus on what's most important. And the other is to create partnerships with others that enable you to share your strengths with other people's strengths so that together we are, it's possible for us to be better at what we're doing. Great, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, so thank you again very much, Barry. Okay, thanks, Denise. Thank you, uh, Yanir, very fascinating. And I think you're pointing towards, as I kind of think of the whole conversation today, I think you're pointing towards the crux of what we're dealing with in the world right now. And mm -hmm. that is the way, I mean, generically, the way I see it, the way We've been doing things may not be the way we're going to be doing things. So this, this going to the distributed system opposed to only top down um, is really powerful. Anything you want to say before we close? No, I uh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the questions and the discussion and I look forward to future interactions. Great. Thank you Great. so much. You Looking so much. forward to having you back. I'd like you to just mention the name of your book in case somebody would like to know more about your work. 
Sure. Shall I mention it? Yeah, so, please. Uh, <laughs> the book is called Making Things Work. Um, and that's um, the book that doesn't have equations in it. If there are people who want the equations, then it's called Dynamics of Complex Systems. And um, there are other articles and both pedagogical materials and more technical materials on our website, which is the New England Complex Systems Institute, necsi.edu. Uh, look forward to your joining us in our efforts to make things work. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that and how people can get hold of you. We've been with Ian Ar uh, uh get your last name right, Baryam out of Boston today. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say in closing, Denise? No, just thank you so much again for um, everyone, um, for Yanir and, and uh, the rest of the audience. Um, it's just really been a very interesting conversation. I could um, ask you lots of other questions um, and continue going on, um, but obviously, alas, our time is uh, ended, so maybe we'll have you back for another conversation, Yanir. Perfect. Have a good day. Great. Thanks so Great. much. Thanks, everyone. See you on another conversation. Bye-bye.